This is the second part of Secondary 1 Math, Lesson 11-4. With number 13, pause the video, try these two problems, and then we'll check. Okay, number 13, 3x to the second power is 3x times x. 5m to the fourth power is 5 times m times m times m times m. What do they have in common? They don't have anything in common. So since there's no GCF, you can't factor it. It's kind of like when you have a number like 17. What are the factors? It's 1 and 17 only, and so we call it prime. And so we do the same thing with an expression that we cannot factor. We call it prime. Okay, because there's no factors, there's nothing you can multiply together to give you that. One never counts as a common factor, and so we just call it prime. Don't say no GCF on this one, because I didn't ask you what is the GCF. I asked you to factor it, so then you would just say it's prime, meaning it can't be factored. Okay, number 14. You probably didn't know that, but now you do. Okay, so number 14, we've got three terms, so 6x to the third. So you should have written it out like this. Um, 4x to the second, and 8x. Okay, what do they have in common? They have 2. Now, you notice that these two have a 2 in common, but it's not in common with all three. It has to be with all three. If it's not with all of the factors or all the numbers, you can't call it a GCF. They have an x in common, but that's it. So 2x is my GCF. So I'm going to say 2x times what? So look at all your leftover pieces. 3x to the second minus 2x plus 4. And there you go. So once you understand how you're pulling this apart, it's a lot easier to get it factored. So factoring with GCF is the easiest way to factor. You can't always do it though, so we're going to learn some other ways to factor. You'll learn more ways later on in later years, but for this year we're just going to do GCF and then we'll show you one or two other things you can do with that. Um, 15 and 16. Okay, let's try these. Um, I'm going to do the first one with you because this is a little bit different. If you notice that on this one, our leading coefficient, meaning the coefficient that comes first, is a negative. Okay, so we have a negative, what's called a leading coefficient. And so when you have a leading coefficient that's negative, you have to take the negative out with the GCF. Okay, so I'll show you what I mean by that. Okay, so what we're going to do first is we're going to write out the negative 10y. Now you'll notice that this time I'm putting the negative with it. That's only because it's a leading coefficient. So I'm going to write negative 1 times 2 times 5, and then y to the second power. The 35, I can just write 35y and have 5 times 7 times y. But the thing is, is when you have a leading coefficient that's negative, you're going to have to take out a negative. So since we've got negative right there, we might as well just say times negative 1. I'll show you another way to think about it in just a second. So what do they have in common? They have the negative 1 in common, they have the 5 in common, and they have the y in common. So negative 5y. Okay, times what? What's left over? 2y. Now this, this is the tricky part. You, you can't just put a minus there because if you do a negative times a negative, then you end up with a positive and you're supposed to have a negative. So that's actually going to have to be a positive this time. And so this is where, where it becomes really important to work it back through and make sure that you're really getting what you should be getting. And then this part is 7. So like I said, anytime you factor, you can always check by multiplying it back through, and that's not a bad idea. So if I did, if I multiplied, I'd get negative 10y to the second, and then I'd get minus 35y. So you see if I had put a minus sign in the middle right here, I would have had a plus 35y, which is not what I wanted. So that's something to be aware of. So my answer is going to be this right here. Okay, so let me try the next one with you, and then you can try a couple on your own with a negative leading coefficient. 
So another way you can think about it is you can just write the, the 3 into the third P, and then the 6 NP to the second is, and you can say, what do I have in common? I've got 3 N P, so 3 N P. But you need to remember that since you've got a leading coefficient, it's going to have to be negative there. Okay, if you don't take out the negative with it, it's just not correct. It's just not how it's done. It's kind of like the standard form thing. Okay, what are you going to multiply by? What do we have left over? We have n times n. And down here we have 2 times p. Now, the tricky part is getting the sign in the middle. So think about it. A negative times something, I need it to be positive. So a negative times what is positive? A negative times a negative is positive. So it's going to have to be minus in there. So when you have that negative coefficient as your leading coefficient, you're going to have to be extra careful about how you factor it. Okay, let's go to the last two problems. And I want you to pause the video and try this on your own. Number 17 has three terms, so it, it doesn't make it any different, just a little bit longer because there's three terms instead of two. Number 18 does not have a leading coefficient that's negative, so you just go ahead and factor that with a GCF. Then we'll turn the video back on and check your last few answers. Okay, number 17. Actually, I kind of like to not put the negative there, and I just go back and make sure I have a negative in my um, GCF. And so then... Make sure you get all the pieces and you just really have to pay attention to where your negatives are. Okay, what do they have in common? They don't all have a 2, so it's not that. They don't all have a 3. They do all have a C, and they all have a couple of D's. So if I did that and then I did that, so my GCF is going to be C D to the second power. Okay, and then remember that I had a negative leading coefficient, so it has to be negative C D to the second power. Okay, so when I look back at my puzzle, I've got 3 D now the nice thing about this is now when you multiply this back through, you will get negative 3c d to the third. But you don't have a negative. You see, if you didn't take out, if you didn't put a negative right there, then you would have to put a negative right there. And the reason that we don't do that is it just looks weird. And it's just not done that way. So I didn't make up the rules. That's just the way it is. And so we're going to have a negative, and we're going to have 3d. Okay, then again, a negative times something, I'm looking for it to be a negative. So negative times what is negative? A negative times a positive. What do I have left over? 2c to the second d. And then a negative times something is going to be a positive. So it's going to be a minus. I'm running out of space. And it's going to be 4c. So let me write this with a little bit more space negative c d to the second times 3 d plus 2 c squared d, that didn't really work that well, minus, ugh. okay, let me try it again, negative c d to the second times 3 d plus 2 c to the second d minus 4 c. On that one, I would highly recommend going back and multiplying through to make sure that you're really getting what you're supposed to get. So just emphasizing this is not your answer. So you're not going to multiply it for your answer. You multiply it to check your work. But what I've got boxed in, that's your answer. Okay, the last problem, um, number 18. So 20 is 2 times 10, and then a to the second, b to the second, and 30 is 3 times 10, a, b. So what do they have in common? They have 
2 times 5, A and B. So 2 times 5 is 10, A, B. Okay, what do they have left over? They have 2, A, B on the first one. There's a plus sign. And 3 on the last one. That's your answer. So hopefully you're following this. If not, I would encourage you to go back through the problems, work them through again. You can watch this video again or parts of it, fast forward, whatever. But this is something that we're going to be using to solve. And next time we'll be doing binomials. So this is really an important day for practice. Okay, you should now get your homework and get to work on it.